So now that we know about conveyors, we can talk about processes that can occur in these conveyors. For example, when your luggage goes through a belt and is checked by someone to see if there is something dangerous in your luggage when you enter uh, an airport. So that's an example. And for that, we can use two things that we will talk about during this lecture. One is the station and the other one is the position on conveyor. The station is something that we'll talk about first and you can position it anywhere inside the conveyor. So let's put it in the middle. This station is special in the sense that you can define a process time that can occur, sort of a delay, but it's more also like a service because you can also use resources that will do something in this station. But let's start by not using resources. Uh, the same way you use a delay in the process modeling library, you can define a time, a delay time, and you can define a stop delay, which in this case is called stop process. You can also define the quantity of items that are processed at the same time. And finally, you can define when does the loading of this station begins and we will see how it works in a bit. Now, this station is a bit complicated to use when you decide to have a conveyor that is not a roller. And we will see that now. But let's start using a roller type of conveyor and let's use a simple delay triangular and see what happens when the quantity of items that need to be processed is only one. So if we run the model, you will see that the box enters the conveyor, enters the station, is processed in the station, while the others wait for their turn. So in a way, there's only one box that can be inside the station and nothing else. So that's why when you use another kind of conveyor that is not the roller, you will get uh, an error or some sort of problem. Why? Because the box needs to be processed in, at the end of the station and since all the boxes move together it's impossible for the box to reach the end because the others are waiting. So you actually have a deadlock because your scenario is actually impossible. Now of course this becomes possible if you reduce the size of the station to something that is manageable. So if you run the model, you will see that the boxes are actually processed, but you will still have a problem because when the box is going to get out of the station, the other box needs to move and it can't move in because only one box is allowed inside the station. Why? Because you defined the loading starts when unloading completes. So the box needs to get out of the station before you can actually load a new box. So if you use simultaneously, so that means that the loading can occur when you are unloading the other box, then everything will work fine. So let's run it and you will see that everything is processed correctly. Now, of course, this box is stopping uh, when it should go forward uh, without problems. So this is actually a bad design because you're wasting time with the boxes that are actually finished because you're using just one belt conveyor. So it's not really a problem for the, of the station, but it's a problem of design. Now the, the boxes are not exactly a little bit, they're a little bit uh, with an offset because remember in the previous lecture we used a box that is not perfectly aligned with the dimensions that we chose. We can move it a little bit. You can always use this button to, to, to move it more precisely. So now we have um, the box that fits, but you still have a little space. So it won't fit exactly, but uh, I hope you get the point. So anyways, you can still use the station with belts, but it's better to use them with rollers or you can 
to other things like connecting different uh, conveyors together in order to make this part independent from the part that is inside but this becomes problematic when you have many boxes that need to be processed at the same time so let's say for example you need to process three boxes at the same time it's almost impossible i think it's impossible with the belt because it's impossible to have three boxes at the end simultaneously but with the roller is perfectly possible so let's see how it works so when you run it you will see that three boxes are processed simultaneously and then three boxes come together of course this is not possible if you have a belt because everything is moving at the same time and you will never get the three boxes together uh, but you can experiment with that if you want of course we can always use the until stop process instead of a defined time we can just put a button here and this button will define when a station stops the process so if you run the simulation here you will see that three boxes will stay there forever until I click the button and then they will leave and others will come of course you have also actions that you can define we won't go through them in detail but let's stop with these ones on fail and on repaired you can make the station fail and you do it programmatically with the fail function so you can name this failure and you can repair it as well with another button and station.repair so to generate failures for the station you need to create your own code uh, compared to what you normally do with resources in the process modeling library where everything is kind of automatic you can generate your own flows but here you need to do it um, programmatically so let's see what happens when a failure occurs but first let's change this to specified time and let's say it only happens in two seconds we're using seconds but of course these are not really realistic values so let's run this model and you will see that everything is going well and let's make it fail so when it fails obviously the boxes will stay there because the station is not actually working so after that we can just repair it and it will stop it will start after two seconds it will process again the boxes and everything will work nicely again now why not let's use resources let's put resources into the game you can use just the normal resources that you have in the process modeling library and you can select here the units the resources that you want to use we won't go into details with this but it works the same way as any other thing you can send the sys resources but you need to send them to something else which is not the agent remember that the agent is inside the conveyor so you can't make a, an agent come inside the station so instead you should define a node for example here where the resource is going to work for example here and or you can choose an attractor or a position of course you can also not attach the resource to the agent because the agent will continue on the conveyor after it's processed you can also customize the resource choice the same way you do in the process modeling library and you can define if the resources stay or leave go back home when uh, they are finished with the processing so let's make this quickly let's make a rectangular node where the resource is going to leave the home node and a path towards this point then the resource will leave here and when it's done it will go back home we don't define we didn't define any particular um, animation item for this so it would be just a blue dot that is going back and forward depending on whether it's needed now let's make at least a little bit smaller and let's check the other element that we wanted to talk about which is the position on conveyor you can also position this 
any, anywhere in the conveyor, and it only has one different property, which, which is it can be blocked or not, which means that the boxes can go through or not. So you can also define processes that occur here without resources available, unless you code it yourself. But let's start with this initially blocked, and we can define here an action that will make the box stop for a little bit of time here until it's ready to continue its course to the end of the conveyor. So to do this process, we can use a dynamic event. Let's call it my process. And this thing will make position on conveyor blocked and blocked. So this process will occur after two seconds. So on leading edge enter, which means the box is just going inside the position, or on trailing edge exit, which is the end of the box reaches the position on conveyor. So let's do it here and we will create my process and we will use two seconds but also we want to block whenever this happens so that means that the box will arrive to the position it will wait for two seconds and then after two seconds it will be released ah, but let's um, unblock this in the beginning because we will block whenever the box enters if you block it before that you may have um, unintended consequences. So let's run this and you will see that the boxes enter the station and then they will be processed one by one in the position on conveyor. But something weird happened, right? The first box actually didn't go through the process, right? Let's see it again. You see that the first box just go through and yeah, maybe it was a mistake to have this initially unblocked but it's also a mistake to have this happening on trail edge exit because this is related to the leading edge enter so that's why we should do this here and actually start this unblocked now if we run it again you will see that the first box is actually stopping in the in this position and being processed so you have to be careful on what to do remember that the initial block is related to the leading edge enter and that's it there are two different actions here that are related to to using cells so fix cells for the conveyor and you can explore that on your own